Good morning. This is a quick follow-up on a video I made a couple of days ago about vegetarianism. Basically drawing on some claims made by Stephen Pinker in his book The Better Angels of Our Natures in which he claims that we're on a kind of moral journey towards an increasing recognition of the rights and interests of our companion species, you might say. So we, we tend to uh, legislate against cruelty to animals far more than we used to. We accept cruelty to animals and mistreatment of animals generally in, for example, food processing, uh, we're much more, we're much less tolerant of those kind of things that we used to. So even now, though our meat consumption is still high and indeed rising, I think it's rising at least anyway, just because of the sheer numbers involved, uh, our tolerance of cruelty is diminishing. And, and indeed our, our tolerance of exploitation of, of, of companion species, animals, and, well, other animals generally, is, is diminishing. Um, it seems to me that there's several things about that. I mean, firstly, the, the fact that food uh, meat consumption is increasing, not so much in the Western democracies, but in other parts of the world, China particularly, but other parts of the world as well, where, as, where um, standards of living go up, where um, income starts to rise in poorer parts of the world. Undoubtedly, meat consumption goes up because meat has always been a luxury item. It's, uh, it's expensive to raise, it's expensive to track down and kill. It takes a lot of time and resources to do that. So it's always been a, a luxury item. So it's, it would be expected that as the standard of living goes up in various places, then meat consumption will go up to match that. But here we are in the, in the technologically advanced uh, democratic West. And yes, our meat consumption is still high, but we do have this, um, this moral journey that we seem to be on, which is, you know, as, as you know, Pinker really outlines it really well in this book, which is a very clear trajectory to it, in which there's all, all, all kinds of rights are being advanced and are, are being taken as completely second nature now, um, including the, the interests of, of animals. So what, what could be expected? And I think one of the things I've, inter I've found interesting in that is that... Um, you know what changes are being made in the in the meat industry, particularly, but in 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 the, the kind of socio politics of meat, to match those changes in the, the moral status of, of meat consumption. And one of the things that's most obvious to me is how um, the the processing of meat has completely almost vanished. You, you very rarely see it. I was watching a documentary a couple of days ago not a documentary, uh, a talk by uh, a woman, um, I can't remember her name now, but I'll put the link in the description, where she was talking about the, the, the increasing invisibility of meat production, how, and, and particularly things like slaughter. You never see meat being slaughtered. It's quite interesting, actually, because I've got a student uh, where I work at university who's, um, I can't remember where he's from now, one of the um, sub-Saharan African states, anyway. And uh, it was very routine in his village where he was brought up for goats to be slaughtered, you know, animals to be slaughtered just in the street, you know, outside in front of the hut. You would slaughter the goat and then it would be processed and, and cooked and so on. Um, but we never see those kind of things, do we? I mean, you, you very rarely see, um, even when I was a child, you would go into a butcher's shop and there would be great haunches of meat hanging up, you know, half of a sheep or half of a cow would be just hanging up in the butchers, you would see it. But you very rarely see that. You know, when we see meat these days, it's usually pre-packaged, usually kind of theatrically lit almost. You know, if in supermarkets, it's lit quite nicely. Um, we very rarely see any part of those processes. All those were completely alienated from the processes of production. We see, you know, pictures of, of what appear to be contented looking cows in fields. And we see processed meat on supermarket shelves. We don't see any of the interim. And the, uh, and I think that's one of the strategies that, that you know, we I think we're all responsible for this. But that's one of the strategies that we, have, uh, as a society, as a culture, has, has produced that hiding of all the processes, hiding, particularly hiding of the numbers involved, because there are billions of animals being killed every day. Um, a, a kind of hiding of all of that, in order to allow ourselves to engage in activity, which I think if we were confronted with it, many of us would find deeply dissonant. We would have dissonance, I think, involved if we were, as the uh, the person who's mentioned, this woman who's given this talk, if we were, you know, 
finding ourselves petting our dog with one hand and eating a lamb shot with the other. And we were kind of obliged, because of the moral journey that we're on, to just to consider the, the disjunctions that are taking place in those kinds of activities that we engage in, even whilst we do them. And also the kinds of rationalizations that we have. The, um, whenever I make a vegetarian video, uh, it, it's always the case that in the comments someone will tell me that they're eating a bacon sandwich in a kind of celebratory, kind of crowing style. And, and I've seen quite a bit of that in comments and, and other videos recently, where there's a kind of um, inverse pride taken, an inverse celebration taken in, um, in meat eating. Which is, which is again, is quite odd. It's, a, it's an inversion. I mean, you see it very clearly in um, it because usually these are the same people. I assume these are the same people. If you're one of these people who who feels the urge to say, "I'm eating a bacon sandwich right now," I'm guessing that you would probably be also the person who would be against, you know, the production of veal or would be against the the um, uh, a certain kinds of slaughtering techniques, the ones that. Uh, produce halal meat, for example. I'm, I'm guessing you would be the kind of person who would be against those. So you clearly have some interest in the, the rights and interests of animals. You, you clearly have some investment that animals shouldn't be treated cruelly, shouldn't be exploited. And yet, in order to... It seems to me, I may be psychologising beyond the data here, but it seems to me that a lot of people, when people kind of um, instead of confronting that and accepting that we are, that we do have this cognitive dissonance in all of us because we are involved in a uh, in an activity which, on some level, is we have a moral problem with. We, in order to counter that, we just kind of flip it over into the opposite side. We just change the the the, the polarity of it completely for a moment and celebrate it. You know, almost almost in that kind of teenage rebellious way. Yes, I am. A bad person. Yes, I am a an outlaw. You know, it's that kind of um, celebrating the the negative. Anyway, um, that's all I've got for now. Thanks for. I'm in my new house, by the way. It's this rather nice picture in my kitchen wall here. Bye.